Hey everybody, this is Hazard Rubon. Welcome to my walkthroughs for the maps to Quake Champions. First map I'm going to be showcasing is Blood Covenant, and I'm pretty much just going to uh, show you where everything is so newcomers can actually get a little bit of a grasp of what's going on with the map. So, if you like the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me for more videos to come. Okay, so this is Blood Covenant, also known as Campgrounds from Quake 3, or a full name Camping Grounds. The map has three levels to it. It has a bottom level, a medium level, and a top level. This is the middle room for the map. This is the main area of the map, pretty much. This used to be the room where the qua uh, quad damage used to spawn. And in this area, you have access to the top level from that jump there. You can rocket jump to the middle level, or you have those two doors that connect to the bottom level. So let's just quickly run through the bottom level. Takes you around here. Up the stairs to the middle level. There's a portal there, that takes you to the high level. And we're back up to, spawn to, 15 the, seconds. to the middle level. Towards the right, we have the corridor connecting. That's pretty much the whole bottom level. So all you need to remember on the bottom level is that we have a shotgun down here, a lightning gun over here, and you can see them from the main room as well when they spawn, or who takes them. And you can also shoot rockets down there when someone is trying to take them. And the bottom of the pillars is the pillar room. Now the pillar room has uh, quite a lot of health things. It has health here. You have an armor shard, and you also have time dials for uh, reducing the cooldown of your skill. Connect up to the middle level from there. I'll share the middle level after this. So we have, like I said, the lightning gun here, another armor shard, and the shotgun. And of course, another health over there, as well as at the end of the corridor all the way at the pillars we have one more health another armor shard and a time dial so three time dials two armor shards two healths that's pretty much it shotgun lightning gun now from the bottom level you can go to the middle level from here and from here those are the two ways you can get to the middle level Ah, sorry, there's a third way as well. And from around over here. And this is probably middle ground. So, I don't know, I'll call it the middle level. Because you're already up a little bit. So this is where the machine gun is. Let's take a look at the middle ground now. The middle ground has this area here. Which goes to that portal, takes you up on the top level. And then we go back to the main room. You can go all the way around to the other side. And from here we have access to this area, which again brings us to the pillars on the middle ground. It has a staircase which connects to the bottom ground. There's a staircase that I showed case before. There. And then it continues around to this corridor here. Three more dials, health all the way around here to the nail gun. So pretty much the middle ground has the uh, rapid fire weapons. It has the nail gun and it has the machine gun all the way down in there. A little bit harder to get to the machine gun but it's also a very strategic point because you can quickly get up on the top level from there. Uh, it also has one, two over there, Three over there. Four over there. Four health bubbles. That's four health bubbles. Uh, no armor shards as far as I remember. Yep, no arm armor shards at all. So it has what it? one, two, three, and one behind. Four healths. Three time dials. And of course ammunition to collect a few ammunition here and um, it connects and also has the most important of all the heavy armor and this connects from here to the top level from that staircase there 
and we can also call this the top level from this jump here which takes you to the railgun uh, corridor thing and also lastly the teleport which also takes you to the top level so we have three ways to get the top level from there now going back to the main room you can get straight away to the top level from this big jump here or this is assuming you don't want to rocket jump from this jump here and this is the top level so we have the middle which is where the rocket launcher is okay this is the middle room this is where the ro rocket launcher is you want the rocket launcher most uh, most of the time more time dials here and down there getting up to here to reduce your and ammo to reduce your uh, skill cooldown and that's the end of this side and we can see all the way on the other side over there that that's where you pick up the rail gun so we have a rocket launcher here and to the right we have the quad damage or the power up spot we have the portal that takes us down here so it's the same room it's just above it if you see how it all lines up that's where the quad damage is this is where the pillars are where the bridge goes to the rocket launcher we go in here just underneath it so the other portal is just here you can probably see it from there actually there it is so we have one portal there, one portal there that they just connect to each other and these are the pillars the pillar room which has the quad damage the tribolt and the mega health you want to be controlling the mega health as well as much as you can whenever you can. Again, the middle ground here stops, but you can get up there simply with a rocket jump or by going to the jump pad or whatever else you want. So, the last part of the high ground is these two corridors here. On one side, we have that armor, and this is the railgun corridor, and this is where you get the railgun. Yay. And on the other side is just, I don't know, just another parallel kind of corridor to it. <clears throat> you can see the rocket launcher all the way over there. It's a very nice, uh, this corridor is very nice for sniping as well actually. You can see people you know, coming and going all over here. It's a high ground and it's pretty open to see a lot of things. You can see people coming and going all the way there. The rocket launcher which is a very in uh, important point to keep going to and the quad damage location, mega health location uh, you have a pretty good uh, eye on things from here you can rocket jump to a lot of these locations you can also rocket jump across whoa still getting used to my rocket jumps from there to there you can rocket jump to here you can rocket jump even from down here up there just made it fast way to get from rocket launcher to railgun as soon as you get the rocket launcher you come across here and that was too much of a high jump but you can get the railgun from here that's a bit of a harder jump you can get the railgun up here can't really do smaller rocket jumps sometimes but you know you get used to that you actually see how a lot of it works well hit a wall and it bounced me off that way Yep, I can. So yeah, you can do a lot of combinations like that. The ways you can actually go from for map domination in terms of the large pickups, you have the big armor here. I found that you find a lot of ways to it because everything isn't connected. It's just where well, you see the quad damage, the health from the quad damage is around about there. So just think of a straight line pretty much and there's multiple ways of getting there. But for me, one of the fastest ways of getting there, uh, see so if I have enough health to do this, is from here and over the head so you can quickly get to here quad damage. and then of course you don't get the quad damage you can rocket jump from down there all the way over here and then of course you have straight jumping and it all comes down to what kind of play style you want to cater to and back again that's pretty much probably I think uh, one of the fastest ways to go from mega health to the other one but you can go different ways as well uh, 
I think that, for example, if you go from here, crap, but you make it up there, and you go all the way here, and you just rocket jump over the whole ledge from that ledge up there, you can land straight away to here again. And again, you go back, and uh, I didn't do it right. You can see that you, know, you can get from one to the other with time to spare. Of course, doing something like that can result in you being a very easy target. So yeah, you can get up from the ledges with rocket jumps, you can get over there again with a rocket jump, you can get to that ground with a rocket jump. Rocket jumping is pretty cool actually. I'm not so much seconds. of a strafe jumper to be honest. I can use it here and there. But I'm much more of a uh, rocket jump kind of guy, which I still have a lot to learn on rocket jumping. Spawn. But anyway, you can also get up across there with a really good timed rocket jump, which I have a really hard time timing most of most of the time, like I get way too high. Uh, I get way too high every time I do that. Or I hit the column. So yeah, it needs a lot of practice, but there are ways you can get around the map real fast from one location to another. So yeah, it's, uh, this is the deathmatch layout of, of the map. And that's pretty much where everything is. And this is Blood Covenant for Sacrifice. For the most part, it's the exact same thing, so you don't have to learn too many new different things. Uh, just keep in mind that there are a couple extra pickups. For example, you have two healths here, two healths there, and there's two healths behind there as well. Generally, it's just a couple extra pickups here and there. And the map is a little larger to compensate for the extra locations for the obelisks. Again, being the main room, this is where the soul spawns. And everything else is pretty much exactly the same thing. Now we get to one of the main two differences. Spawned. One of the major differences in the game, which is that here we have an obelisk instead of the heavy armor. And the heavy armor is placed in this location. From the obelisk, you have two corridors that are open, two new corridors to this terrace here, whatever you want to call it, which has an armor. And it joins around back here. So we have this doorway is opened. That's Power one side. In 15 seconds. One side there. And the other side connects to this, which is where the bridge is. Come down from the bridge. And you can get around here as well. So this staircase has now Power up spawned. Two ways to go. You can go down that way, or you can go down that way. You have the pillar room. And now we have one corridor down here. That's new. Two new doors opened up here. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing something. Anyway, so basically, you can get to this uh, obelisk from here. Soul spawn. There it is. Is that an elder? That's right. There's a third way to get there as well. So you can either go to the final obelisk. The, I don't know which one is A and which one is B actually. Uh, you can go from that door there, two doors up there from the jump, from the mega health jump, or you can go from here as well. Instead of going back up there, you can actually continue on into this location. Now this place has an armor, a health, a health, it's a much more defensive location. And another health there. You have a machine gun, you have a second machine gun here, there's also another machine gun in the room. 
in the map on the other side. So it has more pickups, I think, uh, unless I'm mistaken. Probably to balance it out with the main room on the other location, which also has the heavy armor. And um, here you have the mega health, which is kind of close. You know, you need to jump up here. And it connects to the top area with a shotgun here. The mega health. And there's also another jump down here. You jump down there. You can also rocket jump up there. And this is where obelisk number two lies. It's pretty much the same thing, just with those two rooms opened up at the end. And a couple extra um, uh, pickups with regards to, you know, healing and shit. You got two health orbs over there, and another two health orbs over there. And uh, once you get to this location, which is closer to the rail gun and stuff, it's a little bit more open of an area. It's harder to defend. There's more ways around to it, but there's also some advantages to this side. So each side, I think, is balanced out with a different mentality to it. This one has that rail gun and the rocket launcher closer to it. And the nail gun, of course, here. Yeah. And it has a shotgun here as well. And it becomes a place that you defend much more with regards to the actual routes to it. You also have a heavy armor. Still learning. Uh, sacrifice myself to be honest, so... You know, and it's not like this area here is too easy to defend because you have a lot of ways to get to it as well. You, know, you have a lot of ways to hide around and, you know, while everybody's fighting, jump in, get the soul and run back out. So. That's pretty much uh, how everything is placed in, uh, in Sacrifice. Okay, and for Team Deathmatch, you actually notice that some of the changes that are in Sacrifice are also brought over here. Again, you see how the doors are closed. See, the change that is brought across is that there are more health pickups here. Two there and again to there, so there are small differences that carry across from Sacrifice to uh, the Team Deathmatch and another difference is that for the Team Deathmatch you have proper weapon pickups so that's your uh, machine gun ammunition whereas the other ones are all white that's why it's hardly important at some point to actually even notice which one is which because they're all white and they add ammunition to the weapon that you currently have equipped Whereas here it's like per se, like the like per uh, classic quake, where you have <clears throat> the ammunition for each weapon spawn at different locations. So that's uh, for your machine gun there. Down there you have for the nail gun, lightning gun, rocket launcher. Then we have rocket launcher. I mean, most of these I don't even remember them. Again, machine gun. Here we have rail gun and rocket launcher. <coughs> that's one spot. Fifteen seconds. That's one spot for the rail gun. The other spot is at the back here. Down there. That's your other rail gun ammunition. Again, I, even I don't remember Ford most of spawn. these. That's a lightning gun again. Even I don't remember most of these, and uh, that's getting to really, really hardcore memorizing. And when you're up here, there's no weapon collections here, except from here, which we have again machine gun, shotgun. Uh, probably one of those that I showed you was a shotgun. Then we have again here, what are these? Crap. I think that was machine gun as well? Not sure. Shotgun. You can tell pretty much from the colors. That's shotgun. And this one should have been machine gun because it looked yellow. Learn the color codes. Yeah, it's a machine gun. Right? Ah, a mustard shitty green tribal. Yep. I don't know why they chose to put 
mustard for the tribal. I don't know, like change the color a lot. Put a pink or something, some stupid color that would tell the difference. Then we have yellow, orange, green, and then we have a mustard thing and the yellow and you know, the yellow and the mustard are really close. Just too similar in my opinion. The two healths over there. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the team deathmatch as well. It's a little bit more classic stuff. So you have to learn a little bit where your um, weapon ammunition is as well so you can pick it up. Which again, like I said, they're all color coded, so that's it. Unfortunately, I can't showcase uh, Blood Covenant on Jewel because I don't have another player currently to do this. So those are pretty much that's pretty much Blood Covenant for uh, Sacrifice, Deathmatch, and Team Deathmatch. And that's pretty much the basics that you need to actually uh, know and learn about the map, how to get places fast. What the map layout is generally, where the weapons are, and where the main pickups are. Chances are that the map, because it's in beta, you might actually go through some changes. So whenever something new has been changed with uh, a new weapon location or something, I'll be sure to add an update video for it.